All right, guys. So I'm going to be brutally honest. I just don't know where to start this video. I don't know how to start this video today. There's just so much information. I cannot possibly triage it in the optimal way. So you're just going to have to bear with me. I've been out for the last 72 hours struggling with a mild fever, but I will be fine. Please, no sympathy in the comment sections. I don't need it. I'm a big boy. I'm going to be perfectly fine. I just have not been able to explicate the news to the standard that I typically do. So I've not made any uh, update videos, but here we go. And boy, do we have a backlog of things to discuss. A lot of them are ongoing. As we speak, right this minute, we have 15 Russian strategic bombers in the air en route to Ukraine. Where their targets are going to be, we don't know, but we know fall is approaching. And that means that they're likely going to heavily start targeting critical infrastructure. And it's going to be a hell of a long winter. Oil prices are skyrocketing. Once again, the U.S. is now filling their strategic oil reserve. Well, prices are rocketing. That should tell you something. We also have Ukraine security chief saying that World War III has already begun. Alexei Danilov, while next to David Petraeus, said that uh, it's already begun. So everybody just needs to own up to what's going on and uh, get ready. We also have a Russian general, a former Russian general who wrote the nation's war Bible, insisting that nuclear war is inevitable and that they need to be doing everything they can right now to prepare the population for that inevitability. Okay, more and more people are starting to talk about the inevitability of nuclear conflict. We have rumors, and these are just rumors, that there are currently B-2 stealth bombers stationed in Britain. Now, they've made some visits recently to Norway, one of the first times they've ever uh, broached the European mainland, I do believe. So this is clearly a signal towards Russia. We know that they're going to be getting F-35s that are going to be armed with nuclear weapons soon. All of this is escalatory, guys. We have Russian nuclear bombers covered with tires. Some people are saying these are makeshift cope cages of sorts. Others are saying that it's a way of bamboozling incoming drones, tracking navigation systems. I'm not sure. Uh, it sounds like it, it, they're more so, uh, what are they called, like uh, slat armor, uh, a way to diffuse any sort of explosive uh, potential of these drones. Anyways, I mean, every day now, Moscow's airports are being shut down periodically as a result of these drone strikes. We have a very unique nuclear missile test that took place today in the United States. We'll talk about why it's unique in just a moment. We have more anti-aircraft systems being installed in and around Russia. They already have S-300, S-400 Panzer systems. Now they're installing even more. Okay, we have this incident that happened in Romania. Many of you probably already know this audience is fairly well versed and up to date with respect to the goings on in Ukraine. But if you didn't know, there was a piece of a Russian drone, a piece or the drone in its entirety. We're not quite sure yet. There's conflicting reports of a drone that landed in Romania as the Russians were trying to target a port that was uh, obviously in Ukraine. Now, originally, the Romanians denied this. They're like, hey, 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 we realize what's happening here. You know, the Ukrainians are trying to suck NATO into a conflict. But after and just today, they came out and said, actually, it looks like we have found something. And if it's determined that this drone, in fact, landed on our territory, then there may, and I emphasize may, be the invocation of an Article 4 situation, which, of course, would call all of the NATO members together to discuss what the next step is going to be. Article 4 is essentially Article 5, because understand Article 5 is NATO's declaration of war. Ostensibly, it's a declaration of war against Russia. So Article 4, as the run-up to that, Article 5, a declaration of war against Russia immediately could possibly go nuclear. So Article 4 is pretty much the same as Article 5. Now, Romania was reluctant to do this originally. I don't think they're going to take it to that level. It almost appeared as if first they were denying it, but maybe somebody nudged them, possibly the United States of America, nudged them into saying, oh, this is a great opportunity for you to up 
your air defenses or, you know, increase your military readiness uh, for the inevitable war that's about to spill over into your territory. So it appears that's what they're going to do. This is a statement from the Romanian government. If it is confirmed that the debris that has been found comes from a Russian drone, this situation will be completely unacceptable and will be a serious violation of Romania's sovereignty and territorial integrity. The reasons why the Russians are targeting this specific region is because this is one of the ports and one of the areas that they think that weapons are being smuggled in. So in order to cut the supply line of weaponry, they have to target this place. If they can't target this place because they're getting too close to Romania, then that's going to create obvious uh, strategic problems for the Russians. All right, I got to make sure my camera is in focus here. If you're wondering why I'm, I got, I'm in a Nutrastore fort today, this uh, Nutrastore fort that you see behind me was supposed to be a part of a skit with Normal C. Norman and the All-American Prepper, but we went in a different direction for that video. So now it's just uh, a fancy survival supply stash you can see behind me here. Um, just a word of advice, if you are going to buy some Nutrastore, I'm going to be, I was able to get a bit of a deal, a wholesale deal. So we're going to be passing those savings on to people. I would recommend the proteins. If you're going to go freeze dried, go with the proteins. Okay. Beef, beef cubes, chicken or cheddar. That's a whole protein has all the amino acids you need and is a very high um, calorie count and it's fat. So it's not something that's going to cause uh, you to crash low glycemic, and it's just going to provide you with that energy. Cheddar cheese is just a great investment. I think this one can has something like 10,000 calories worth of cheese in it. So, I mean, if I'm stacking, if you're stacking silver and gold and you're not stacking freeze-dried protein, then you're off your rocker. Because right now we got shrinkflation. We have inflation, and they're also talking about skimpflation. So the price of food is only going to skyrocket, especially over the winter time, I do believe. And now that the prices of oil are going to go up, look out, man. The price of oil is skyrocketing and the U.S. is trying to fill up the strategic oil reserve right now as the price is going up. That means they know that the bottom is in. Okay, And that means that the Russians and the Saudis are putting a lot of pressure this is going to create all kinds of problems. Typically in a recession, the price of oil is supposed to crash, but uh, that's not what it's doing right now. So we are in unprecedented times. I would encourage you to stock up. I'll tell you what, I'm going to do a limited, very limited, and I probably shouldn't be doing this, but I'm going to do it anyways, 15% off Nutrastore. And the only reason why I'm doing that is because I'm getting a wholesale deal, a one day a year deal from the supplier. So I'm going to do 15% off Nutrastore, CanadianPreparedness.com. Use discount code Nutrastore. Let's go Nutrastore 15. Okay. Anyways, uh, Russia is mobilizing this fall. They're going to mobilize, it's rumored, another 200,000 guys. They need around 3 million. Now let's do the math here. They originally mobilized 300,000 last year. This is on top of their standard conscription that they do every year, which was probably around 100,000. They already had a standing army, allegedly of over a million, plus 280,000 more troops have been mobilized this year covertly. Now they're going to be doing another 200,000. This is going to put them close to the 2 million troop range. Rumors are, again, just rumors. So many rumors, the fog of war is sick, that they're about to do a major counter-offensive and the sword of Damocles is about to strike down on the Ukrainians. I guess we are going to see. But what they've done now is they've amended legislation to create total control over the population suitable for conscription and mobilization and make it impossible for men to escape abroad when declaring general mobilization or conscription for military service. They're not the only ones mobilizing men. Ukraine, it would appear, and you were getting mixed reports of this as well, but it would appear that they're calling for the extradition of the draft dodgers who left. Apparently, they number in the over 100,000 
you know, military age men who fled the country when the war was first starting. And they're trying to get those guys extradited back, obviously, to put them back on the front lines because apparently Ukraine is running out of manpower. Ukraine is continuing to make headway in the south, however, and they have now broached that Serevikin line. Apparently, they're now at the second line of defense. So, or at least, you know, these are all rumors, guys. Nobody knows exactly what's going on. Does that mean they sent, uh, you know, they threw a football over the line of defense and that's what constitutes being over the line? We don't really know. But uh, according to the Institute for the Study of War, incredibly pro-NATO, pro-West, I know, tell me all about it, Victoria Newland, blah, blah, blah. Apparently, they are now quite uh, well situated in the Robotno region, and they are making progress. So this is anybody's ball game. Still, I do believe, as much as many of the pro-Russian former intelligence officers would like to have people believe that Russia has this in the bag, I will say, don't go counting your chickens before they hatch. All right. There's been abnormal amounts of emergency action messages, and the reason for that is there have been Minuteman missile tests. As a recent one Minuteman missile test, and the reason why this one was so unique is because it's the first time they've put multiple warheads on the Minuteman missile test since the introduction of the New START Treaty. Of course, the New START Treaty has now been suspended. I think it was New START 2 that was suspended earlier this year with Russia. So now that's an escalation. It's a point of escalation. They at once were limited to the amount of multiple uh, re-entry vehicles that they could put on these warheads as a result of that treaty. Now, this is one of the first ICBM tests, Minuteman missile tests, which is routine, but what's not routine is multiple warheads. Multiple warheads are obviously something you would use in a full-scale nuclear war. So we got B-2 bombers headed to Britain. We got Russia being incredibly uh, careful and guarded now with their nuclear arsenal. We have the release recently of the Sarmat putting that on full combat duty. We have this drone falling in Romania, which is uh, a pretty substantial escalation in and of itself. We have North Korea and Russia that are going to be now exchanging weapons openly. It's basically the veil has been lifted and it's pretty clear that the North Koreans and the Russians are full, fully allied. North Korea, of course, a conduit for Chinese military support. Many people are saying North Korea, poor little impoverished country, doesn't have anything to offer Russia. Well, North Korea has the largest, by a, a very large margin, supply of self-propelled artillery and towed artillery. They have more artillery than the United States. They probably have more artillery shells than the top militaries combined. We're talking about 20,000 artillery pieces, 5,000 self-propelled artillery they were ready remember to lay the south to waste using just artillery before they entered the nuclear age so they have a lot of artillery okay and uh they're going to share it with the russians and it it uh, lends itself well to the russian artillery heavy strategy we also have germany buying aero 3 hypersonic anti-ballistic missile systems from israel these are specifically designed to take down ICBMs. These are designed to fight a nuclear war. And this is clearly a massive escalation because this puts Germany dead in the Russian crosshairs if it wasn't already. This is a system which can cover all of Europe. It's going to cost them 4 billion euros. And they claim it's one of the most capable systems, even more capable than the Patriot, the much lauded Patriot missile defense system, especially for its ability to target satellites and inter ICBMs beyond their launch phase, like when they're actually in the uh, upper stratosphere, whatever it is, wherever they go. I'm not an expert on that. We have, as I indicated, the strategic oil reserve is now silently starting to be filled up. Not by much. It's still near its new record low for the last 40 years. And you have to keep in mind with that strategic oil reserve is that when we last were at the level it was at, the population was much lower. We're talking about 
2 billion less people on the planet. The reason why they call it strategic oil reserve is yes, it's for the purpose of a national emergency. Should there ever be a nuclear war and uh, we're unable to get oil from other places, but it's also to keep the prices down on the whole. And that's why when they were releasing oil from the strategic oil reserve earlier in the year, as they have been for the last year, they were getting a lot of flack why are you sending this oil to China, yada, yada, yada? Well, they were doing that to bring the prices down of stuff. That's one of the main reasons why the CPI dropped. One of the main reasons why inflation has been artificially suppressed. Now that that's no longer going to be there and we're going into winter, energy prices are going to start to skyrocket. Once again, the price of everything is going to explode, not counting the fact that we still have this banking crisis on our hands that is a ticking time bomb in and of itself as they continue to try to raise interest rates. Now, because inflation will not be tamed because the Russians and the other BRICS countries are colluding, it would appear, to elevate the price of oil so that this is going to keep inflation increasing. Inflation continues to increase if the Fed decides to cut interest rates, then that means it's to the moon, hyperinflation style. If they don't, which they probably won't be able to now, they could potentially collapse the banks and then the system topples just in another direction. The inverted yield curve is pointing towards trouble is on the horizon in the very least a protracted recession if we're not already in one, but it's being papered over. They're using this strategic oil reserve very strategically to hide the true inflation that is buried in the system that they're not going to be able to eliminate through austerity, passing the buck on to us. You know, it's incredible to me how Jerome Powell can come out and say, yeah, we, we need more unemployment. We need people to be poor so they stop buying stuff. That's how we're going to fix the monetary inflation that we created through quantitative easing. It's incredible that that's, that that's allowed. And we're going to have a guest on this weekend, guys. He's going to break it all down, going back to the first principles of how this system works. And trust me, I've been on the internet in this whole crazy tinfoil circuit for probably 20 years. And I've heard all the explanations of the gold and the fractional reserve and the blah, blah, blah. But this guy breaks it down in a way that I assure you is just going to make it really just click for a lot of people as to how preposterous this system that we are currently in actually is. So oil is going up. We don't know how high it's gonna go, but that's a big factor in what's going on right now, all right? We have a Baltic Sea and Black Sea NATO exercises coming up. This is obviously gonna be a big point of contention with the Russians, just another Point of escalation, we got another billion in military aid as Anthony Blinken and his counterpart uh, discussed over eating McDonald's french fries today. You can't make this stuff up. You just can't make this up. And another 24 billion earmarked for the Ukraine war that's likely to be approved before the end of September by the guy, not the guy who lost his mind there. What's his name? Not Biden. Um, the other guy, Mitch McConnell. Okay, the other guy who's just, you know, he served his time, but it's starting to look like it's time to go, buddy. Anyways, they're keeping him around long enough to announce the uh, extra $24 billion, which the Senate's probably going to approve. Legionnaire's disease run rampant in Kharkov. Russia definitely not returning to the grain deal. And I think there was a bit of parapraxis with Erdogan and Putin when they met Erdogan uh, made a Freudian slip where he said something to the effect of Turkey and Russia are at war. Now, Putin just brushed it off because Putin is a pragmatic man. You know, he's not one to, he, he's one to know when things are taken out of context. He's, he's, you know, the opposite of a Karen, I would say. So he didn't really read too much into it. But, you know, is Turkey just stringing Russia along? This is something that Russia needs to be thinking about right now because right now you have the Ukrainians targeting Turkstream, and how can you have the Ukrainians targeting the Turkstream gas pipeline when NATO is supposed to be aligned with Ukraine and this is Turkey wanting to be the gas hub of the Black Sea? So, 
You know, I've long since suspected that maybe Turkey is hoping that uh, Russia will be defeated in some way, shape, or form, and that somebody else is going to come over and take over this infrastructure, or maybe, you know, they're trying to play both sides of the fence, right? And I think eventually they're going to be forced to take it aside definitively. And we may have well seen the last meeting between Erdogan and Vladimir Putin, who clearly said that they're not going back to the grain deal. Okay. There's a massive Polish military buildup happening right now. And I think they've now committed 4% of their annual budget, but that doesn't count anything that they're getting via lend lease. I don't think because every day it seems like Poland is bringing in more and more stuff. A lot of this stuff of course is being sent to Ukraine, like the Abrams tanks, which have just, uh, they're probably already in Ukraine. I imagine they're being smuggled in right now because they're supposed to be there by mid-September. So we're, there's going to be a whole lot of first. And of course, they're going to be armed with depleted uranium. Man, this thing is just, this thing is out of control. It's totally out of control. You have Latvia getting ready to plant anti-tank mines on the border with Belarus. Okay. Latvia is getting ready to plant anti-tank mines on the border with, with Belarus. Ministry of Defense is considering the possibility of placing these mines and various other additional barriers to strengthen the security of the eastern border of Latvia. Well, why would you need to do that? Why would you need to do that unless you're ready to go to war with these countries? This has already been done on the northern border with Ukraine. The border has been heavily fortified between Poland and Belarus. You have all this stuff going on with Kaliningrad. You have the recent incursion into Russian airspace of those drones that targeted the Peskov airspace, airbase that many suspect either came from the Baltic Sea, or uh, I'm the only one floating that theory, no pun intended. Nobody's talking about how these could have came from international waters over uh, Baltic countries' airspace. They could have came from inside Russia, some people suspect, but they could have also came from <clears throat> Ukraine all the way, the 700 kilometer, but that seems unlikely considering there was 20 of these things, or it could have came from the Baltic states. So we just don't know at this point in time. It appears as though something is about to kick off in Armenia and Azerbaijan, just another point of inflection in this conflict. The Wagner organization was designated a terrorist organization by the Brits. It's already been de designated a terrorist organization by other NATO countries. Why they're doing this now as it's effectively been disbanded and integrated into the Russian military, I don't know. This just seems like a chihuahua that barks once you leave, you know, and, and as, it, as you approach, it runs away. Uh, it, it seems like this is more symbolic than anything, knowing now that there's not going to be any repercussions if there is no more Wagner Group or if it gets rebranded as something else legally. Anyways, Estonia is advising its citizens not to go to Russia for any reason. Not sure why that is the case, possibly because World War III is on the horizon. As we're told, China is continuing to dump U.S. treasuries. Lots of talk about China right now, about the Chinese economy collapsing. Look, China's going to have its little housing crisis just like they did in the United States. China is not going to collapse. If China collapses, then, you know, you can kiss your ass goodbye in terms of getting anything that you might have been trained to purchase from any of those big box stores for the, the price that you're getting it at right now. The only reason, and this is something else to consider about inflation. Inflation has been mitigated over the last 30 years by cheap labor and through automation. Imagine if you take cheap labor out of the equation. You take automation out of the equation. And you take cheap oil out of the occasion. I mean, prices are going to explode beyond what most people can comprehend right now. We're supposed to see deflation during uh, recessionary times. But if w this war gets hot and we have this recession and this economic collapse on top of it, you know, all bets are off right now, put it that way. But they're dumping treasuries down to $835 billion. 
Uh, at the high, I think it was around 1.2 trillion. So they've already dumped around 40% of their treasuries and they got to do this slowly. They can't do it all at once because that would crash the value of the currency that they currently are holding. All right. So Armenia, Azerbaijan, it looks like the shit's about to hit the fan there. The Americans are going to be doing joint military exercises with Armenia, which is a first Chinese armored vehicles are being deployed to the province opposite Taiwan. Now the military buildup in this region has been known about for some time, but of course now it's going to be ramped up because the U.S. is now committed. It's official. They're going to be sending a HIMARS to Taiwan, which is a big red line. You have Okinawa in Japan. There's protests there because uh, the U.S. military is creating new runways for their aircraft. Of course, we have all kinds of stuff going on with Japan and Russia. I mean, there's just so much stuff like war, war, war. Like pick your spot on the map, a war is going on. Niger has now increased the price of its uranium to 200 euros per kilogram. Before, I think it was almost a euro, one euro per kilogram. So they've raised the price against France. They want the French out as many countries do they're trying to de neo colonize the region and uh, get their people their very impoverished country the fair price for the natural resources okay and uh, it's looking like russia north korea and china are about to do three-way military exercises so the shizzy is hitting the fizzy all around now this statement by the former Russian general. We have a lot of people talking about the inevitability of nuclear war nowadays. This former Russian general, Alexander Vladimirov, warned that nuclear war was inevitable. The goals of Russia and the goals of the West are their survival and historical eternity. This is one of the first people I've heard actually appreciate the importance of this conflict from the perspective of the West. Because the U.S. dollar and the euro, which will collapse first, the U.S. is going to, uh, the euro is going to collapse first, and the U.S. is going to be able to maintain uh, itself as the global reserve currency at the expense of the euro. Because the euro is just not going to be a viable safe haven once that economy starts to crash, those economies start to crash when the rising energy prices, when that harsh reality actually kicks in and the, they can't keep pace with winter with the liquid natural gas, which they're already paying way too much for, uh, they're just not going to be able to be competitive for just a variety of reasons. They're losing control of Africa. You know, they're not going to be able to get the cheap uranium for the nuclear plants and just energy, energy, energy is going to be a problem. And now that the BRICS nations are cornering that market, like 80% of the oil market, forget about it. Okay. Europe's not going to be able to compete. The U S is going to continue to be able to be the global reserve currency at the expense of the Euro, which currently I believe is around 20% of global reserve currencies. So BRICS has a long way to go before they can even, you know, call themselves a, a viable alternative, a trusted alternative. And that's why, you know, Evgeny Prigozhin, before he died, he had a bunch of U.S. dollars. That's the irony of this whole thing. In his possession, he had hundreds of thousands of U.S. dollars and a bunch of gold. Okay, if Prigozhin has gold and you guys don't have gold under your pillow or freeze-dried food, because this is money, guys. I'm 100% convinced that... Freeze-dried food that will last pretty much indefinitely. They say 25 years, but it'll last indefinitely. That's, that's money. That's the future of money. Anyways, um, he goes on to say, this Alexander Vladimirov, the goals of Russia and the goals of the West are their survival and their historical eternity. Understanding this is an existential fight for both sides, not just the Russians. And this means that in the name of this, all means of armed struggle available to them will be used, ultimately, including such a tool as their nuclear weapons. And this is why you're seeing the increased amount of STRATCOM activity right now. It's of no 
coincidence. They're not going to be putting mileage on these planes for no reason. These things have a limited lifespan and the U.S. military, believe it or not, does have a limited budget. So all of these doomsday planes you're seeing in the air, all of these movements of strategic forces like the F-35s to the U.K., the B-2 bomber rumored to be in the U.K. today, and the doomsday planes going in and around Europe, and all of the other movement of strategic forces and anti-ballistic missile systems, and just everything upon everything, racks on racks on racks on racks of nuclear escalatory behavior that we're seeing is just par for the course. Anyways, and this means that in the name of this, all means of armed struggle available to them will be used, including nuclear weapons. He warned, I am sure that nuclear weapons will be used in this war, inevitably, and from this, neither we nor the enemy have anywhere to go. The sooner our politicians and leadership realize this, the sooner we start to train our troops and the population for this, the more chances we will have for survival, which means victory. Now, is this just the rumblings of a man who's still stuck in the Cold War era style of thinking? It's possible, but I would have to agree with him about the inevitability of this. On the one hand, and the reason why they're committing so much money to this fight, and just to put in perspective, while it's true that the U.S. has committed 10, 20 billion in the last few months to Ukraine, in that same amount of time, in the last quarter, they've added $1. trillion in debt. A lot of that interest payments on the debt that they already owe. But think about that. If the victory in this Ukraine war, in any way that you can imagine, because you can't imagine a victory without the use of nuclear weapons, which is insane, which means that both sides are just hoping that when it does finally come down to that final game of chicken, somebody's just going to swerve and move out of the way and not, is not going to do a retaliatory strike. Um, in the run-up to that, things are just going to get increasingly more hostile and all the more existential this becomes for the U.S. dollar. Because if the U.S. cannot win this war, the U.S. dollar... That's the death knell. Okay, we've already seen the death knell, and that was BRICS, that was Saudi Arabia committing to join BRICS in the beginning of 2024. I mean, that's the end game for it. But understand that other countries, even the adversaries in this conflict, currently stand to benefit with the U.S. dollar. The only reason why Russia would want to tank the dollar, from my perspective, would be for militaristic strategic purposes. The Russians stand to gain, as many other countries who hold dollars stand to gain by having some stable, universally recognized fiat-based currency. And as my guest uh, this weekend is going to talk about, what the Russians and the Chinese are going to offer will be no better. It's just going to be another replacement fiat scheme. What everybody should be striving for, the proletariat of the world, if you will, we should be striving for a gold-backed, digital, decentralized currency of sorts, which probably will never happen, but there's a reason why gold is still one of the most coveted things by central banks, by governments, and by the rich in the United States, who in private possession have around 26,000 tons of gold in their possession. The rich be stacking. Understand that the wealthy people of the world have about 10% of their wealth in gold. The smart ones, anyways. Maybe not the Warren Buffetts who claim to not be a believer in gold uh, for a variety of different reasons, but who knows what they are secretly up to. Alexei Danilov, Russia's, or sorry, Ukraine's security chief, the guy who always looks at you like under his glasses. I don't know why he wears glasses. If in every picture that he's in, he's looking over top of his glasses. Anyways, if somebody thinks that World War III hasn't started, then it's a huge mistake, he says. It has already begun, and it's been underway in a hybrid period for some time, and it's now entered the active phase. Sitting on stage beside former CIA director General David Petraeus, Danilov said that if somebody thinks that the Ukrainian conflict is about settling the scores between Kiev and Moscow... It's a mistake. Things are much more complicated. 
Petraeus also highlighted the scale of the Ukraine conflict, saying that he hasn't seen anything like it since World War II. And he says that while the Russians are not particularly impressive in terms of knowledge and performance on the battlefield, they have created a rather outstanding defense system and is quite difficult to punch through, they claim. So everything is just coming to a head at this point in time. And uh, do not wait. Please, please do not wait till the last minute to stock up on whatever you got to stock up on. If you can't afford freeze-dried food, I'm going to extend the discount to our Mylar bags and our oxygen absorbers. Just go down, you know, cancel some plans this weekend, head out to the wholesale food place, fill a few buckets up with rice, Mylar bags, oxygen absorbers. We have links on the channel how to do that. It's the simplest thing you can possibly do for yourself and you're never going to be at a loss. Who isn't going to be able to use rice? We cycle our stuff in our pantry all the time. We've done plenty of different videos on different powders that we'll store long term that are cheap. Okay, there's lots of cheap solutions right now that don't require this, but this is money because there is still going to be the importance of having a, a diversity in terms of your food preps. And one of the great things about meat, like uh, Nutristore or the wholesale food stuff that we also uh, have done collaborations with before, excellent stuff as well, is that you mix this, okay? So you buy some ground beef. Hear me out on this. You get your five gallon bucket of rice for 40 bucks, right? You pair that with your number 10 can of ground beef or your number 10 can of meat or cheddar cheese. I eat cheddar cheese on rice all the time. I'm weird like that. I'll eat cheese on anything. It's a great protein source. It's also a great fat source, I must say. And I tell you right now, I'm struggling, especially with that cheesecake the old lady made the other night. But uh, I tell you, man, this is money. This is like, I view this as like this is, I see no difference between this and the fiat currency in my pocket because this is only rising in price. Food prices, fruit sprite hikes are going to be coming in the near future as a result of the climate stuff that's going on. Greece just went through, they had one of the biggest fires that they ever had as a result of very dry conditions. And then they got a year's worth of rain in a day. India's crops decimated, not decimated. Uh, I don't know what step up. Uh, we need a better word. Decimated is by 10%, but it doesn't do it justice. India's crops were wiped out. They are banning the export of rice. The markets still haven't processed that yet. The markets still haven't processed the increase in energy costs that are coming for the next growing season. The increase in fertilizer costs, which are now going to be permanent as a result of the suspension of the grain deal, the sanctions against Russia and Belarus are the biggest producers of fertilizer and distributors around the world. You have the stuff going on in Africa. I mean, the companies right now, what they've done in order to cheat the CPI is they've partook in shrinkflation and they've also partook in another word I've heard, it's skimpflation. So what skimpflation is, you can't really do it with freeze-dried food because these are just pure ingredients. With skimpflation, what they do is they reduce the quality of the input ingredients. And so some people are starting to notice, hey, this processed crap that I've been eating for years suddenly doesn't quite taste as good as it used to. Uh, maybe they just, you know, downgraded the standard of one or two ingredients in order to minimize the cost of production by two or three percent. Okay, and they're, they're doing this in conjunction with the typical run of the mill food inflation, which has been occurring for years now. And uh, shrinkflation by, you know, lessening the quantity in the number 10 cans by a factor of 10 percent. Mountain House did that recently. Mountain House has downsized a lot, a lot of their varieties. It's a great company. They make great meals. The freeze-dried food that I recommend and the only ones I'll recommend, Mountain House, um, Nutristore, Peak Refuel, Happy Yak is good for short-term 
They do use some dehydrated ingredients. All of these foods are gonna last way, way longer than the expiration date. This is gonna last 100 years. The Happy X stuff is gonna last 20 years, but they don't have the certification yet to put it on the package, but that's just government, you know, you can use your common sense. There's some people who want that date on there as a peace of mind, but as a prepper, you got to think outside the box, okay? You, you don't, it, it's, I'm not saying that you should not listen to any of those uh, officially certified uh, certifications that are gained from those agencies, but understand that it's a bit of a racket at the same time. And there's a reason why expiration dates are not mandated, mandated for any food besides baby formula in the United States and Canada. Expiration dates are best by dates. So the other freeze-dried food company, which is great, is Arcopia. Our friends over at uh, Arcopia freeze-dried smoothies, absolutely delicious. And that's gonna be a real form of currency as well because of the denominations and the size. It's just like a pound of freeze-dried fruit puree. So it's just concentrated nutrients and uh, you're getting that in a very small package, not very high in calories, but in terms of the nutrient content and as a morale booster, it is very good. The Backpackers Pantry freeze-dried meals, they also have great variety. While they have shorter shelf life, due in part to some of the ingredients being dehydrated, they're still very delicious. But I mean, on the whole, you get something in a Mylar bag, I don't care what it is, as long as most of the moisture is sucked out, it's gonna last a long time. And just remember that the same Karens who are saying everything is gonna give you a botulism and you can't drink the water out of the lake that we drank for millions or tens of thousands of years, or you know, you gotta do this, this, and this, and you gotta wash your hands 50 times before you do this, I mean, those same people are the ones who make a lot of these rules. I'm not suggesting you do anything stupid. You know, for legal reasons, I can't obviously say, you know, go and drink the water from the lake, but you guys get what I mean. You, you gotta understand that, well, there is a reason why we have these certifications and standards in our society. And while on the whole, they've probably increased life expectancy in conjunction with various technologies, a lot of it is there just to be idiot proof. But, Yes, indeed. There's a reason why your stomach, if you got used to the, the, uh, the, the fauna in the lake that's nearest to you, you would get used to it and you'd probably be able to drink from that lake. You'd probably be sick for the first few times and it probably wouldn't be good. But, you know, we're not talking about waterborne illness due to human feces contamination or something like that. We're talking about water in nature that we subsisted off of for 10,000 years. So just, you know, don't be a, an apocalypse Karen when it comes down. I know there's a lot of people saying, oh, you, you know, you're judging it. If you view it through the standard of this modern civilization, then yeah, you know, you're not going to be able to do much. <laughs> but, you know, they say you're supposed to get eight hours of sleep at night. You're not going to get eight hours of sleep when the shit hits the fan. You're going to be lucky to get you know, 15 minutes. That's why you got to learn how to do, um, what do they call it again? We did a video on it once where you only sleep in like 15 minute power nap intervals and you do that every couple hours. And this is the way people used to sleep. It's like an intermittent sleep cycle. Uh, there's an actual term for it. Man, I'm just going off on tangents here. You know, I've been a little under the weather and uh, I don't know what it is with this COVID or whatever it is that I got, but it just affects your brain. It affects your ability to think. And uh, I'm feeling like Joe Biden today. So forgive me if I'm a little incoherent. I wonder if there's any of these stories that I should go into greater depth about. I think the most important thing today is what's happened in Romania. That's at some point, and I'll say this, when NATO wants an excuse to intervene, they'll make one up. So I think this caught Romania off guard. They probably have a plan at some point to intervene in the conflict in some way, shape or form, or if and when they're going to actually invoke Article 4. Because right when they do that, that puts us at a much higher state of uh, nuclear readiness. And uh, that's going to put the Russians on a higher state of combat alert, nuclear combat alert. 
So they have to be careful when they do that. But I do believe that they, you know, if and when they wanted to do that, they will. And they're, they're going to do it on their time. So if the Ukrainians are insisting that this was a Russian drone that crashed in, which it appears it probably was, um, I don't think that the Romanians are going to haphazardly invoke Article 4 and go to war with Russia over this. What they will use it to do is bolster their defenses at the border. And this is how it could possibly escalate in that they then move missile defense into that region. They start taking out Russian drones from Romania with that air defense equipment. And that's when you see the point of escalation. That's when the Russians say, hey, why did you just shoot down this drone that we were trying to shoot at Ukraine? I know it sounds crazy. Um, it sounds crazy that it hasn't happened already. You know, when you really think about it and why hasn't Poland helped out Ukraine and why is that against the rules? I mean, we all know why, but, you know, not much makes sense right now. And uh, if nothing makes sense now, then there's a good chance that uh, there's a reason for that. There's a good chance that, how can I say this? Maybe I have to I have to meditate on this a little bit more what I'm about to say but let's leave that for another day guys. I don't want to overly convolute. We're already at 46 minutes. God. I think we talked about everything we need to talk about. Anyways, keep on prepping, keep on stacking it to the rafters because one of these days there's going to be a big, big story in the news and everybody's going to be rushing back to this channel. And uh, I just hope that all those people, even the trolls in the comment section, took it upon themselves to, in the very least, just get a little bit prepared. This day and age, it's, it's never a bad thing. It's never a waste. And most preps are appreciating assets. Most of them, especially the food that is about to skyrocket in price. Use that coupon code NutraStore15 for 15% off, and it's only for the next 48 hours. And I'm also going to make that applicable to the Mylar bags. All right, guys, get at it. Thanks for watching. Canadian Prepper out.